The market value gives you a good idea of how much a player is roughly costing at this present moment in time and also in the past, even if they haven't actually transferred so you don't actually have a benchmark of an actual sale to be able to know how much they're actually sold for, but also be able to look at what the team's current value of all their players is so you can get full team market value as well as just the single players. And the great thing is you can actually pull all this data from a website called Transfer Market by using a package in R called World Football R. So let's jump over to my R Studio so I can show you how I scrape that data. If you've never installed R or R Studio before, I've linked in the description below how to do that in a previous video that I created. And also you can download this full R script here as well. But if you wanted to follow on from scratch after you've installed R Studio and R, or if you've already got R Studio and R, what you can do is literally go up to file, new file, R script, and then you can start from scratch and follow along that way. Within R, there is the actual package called World Football R, but it's not the most up-to-date version. So the best thing to do is to actually download the latest version that sits on GitHub. And the quickest and easiest way to do this is if you install the package dev tools which I've got here and you just run install.packages in brackets and quotation marks dev tools it allows you to grab packages from github and then to install packages from github you just need to know what the root is and so for this case this is the root to world football r on this person's github and then all you have to do is type in dev tools that's the name of the package here and then you do colon colon and all that's doing is pointing to then the function of install underscore github which is where all that happens and then you just install that and then once that's installed to then start using it you then need to run actual world football r as a library so type in library and then in brackets world football r and if we run this we now have the package ready to use so first i'm going to show you how quick and easy it is just to be able to pull in the whole of just the english premier league this current season that's just happened and all valuations of all players and how you do that is there's a function called tm which stands for transfer market and then underscore player, underscore market, underscore value. And then within that, this is where you put the country that you want to get the information from. Transfer market data is very much based on the top tier of each country. So if you're going to do any other countries, always think about what's the top tier football league in that particular country. And then you just need to put in the country name. And then the start year is the start of the season. So because season 23, 24 started in 23, we put in 2023. And then if we run this, this will take a while, so I've already run it, so I'm just going to show you what it looks like. All you would have to do is then just point it to whatever you want to call the actual table. In this case, I decided to call EPL underscore league underscore valuations underscore 2023. And then to view it, you can either just run it and go up to here and then find it like this and double click it and you can see it that way or you can run it by doing view like this and it pulls up the same information i like to add the view bits because it automatically runs when you do it now one thing you'll notice with this information is r automatically defaults to scientific numbering this is why you see the numbers like this and if we come along over here you'll see we're starting with man city and then it goes to arsenal but if we just do order of player names so we can start with the highest name first you've got aaron cresswell and then if we scroll along place west ham height is 1.7 meters left footed joined west ham from ipswich in 2003 contract expires this season so he's probably either going to leave on a free or they will extend his contract but normally if a player's got to that point they're probably going to leave on a free and then yes we can see that the market value doesn't give you the full number because it's giving you it as scientific and then you've got the profile link url to transfer market to be able to look at that particular player so you can take that url and that also gives you a unique identifier when looking against different ones because that is everything that is about that particular player now to fix that scientific numbering you can create a format that removes the scientific numbering the only annoying thing about when you do format in r is that it will convert it to character so even if you wanted to put in a thousand separator which i'll show later it converts it to character and as i'm going to show what the market value of a team is i don't want that number to be 
become a character, I want it to stay numeric, so then I can do a sum, which we'll come to in a sec. So what I like to do is use the options to turn off scientific numbering. So to do that, you put in options and then SciPen equals 999. If you wanted to turn scientific notations back on, you can either quit R, come back in, or you can just go options, SciPen equals zero. But for now, I'm just gonna run this to get rid of the scientific numbering. And then if we view again, and then if we do the name, do Aaron Cresswell at the top again, we can see his actual worth is 900,000. These are all in euros as well, so it's obviously less than pounds. It's obviously more than pounds, but less than dollars, if I remember rightly. So you can convert them if you want to, but just remember, this is all in euros. So he's less than a million worth now. West Ham have a few players like that who seem to be at the end of their contract. Got another one here. Who's that? Spanish thing for their keeper. Oh no, that is not West Ham. That is joined from. So joined from that is a player that is. So now what I want to do, because we've now got all of the Premier League teams, it'd be interesting to see how many players in each team actually has a market value for and also what that total market value is and what's the average per player market value for each team as well. And the easiest and best way to do any manipulations like that, where you're going to be grouping a table, summing, adding new columns, so on and so forth, is dplyr. And to install dplyr, all you have to do is do install.packages and in quotation marks and brackets, dplyr for dplyr. And just to load it in, then you just put in library and then in brackets dplyr. And if I run this, it loads in. Don't worry about any war warnings like this it has actually loaded in it's just saying when it was built under and then if we come down to here I've created a table that is basically taken all this information here and just given me the relevant information of I wanted to group by the team and then I wanted a summary of the number of players so it just counts how many number of players there were and then the average market value per player so I've just done the mean because that would just give you what the average is of the amounts of total and then the actual market value of all players in that team which is a sum of the player underscore market underscore value underscore euro and then I've just arranged it so you're starting from the highest value teams to the lower value teams and if I run that and then it would pop up with a view you can now see what's happened there we can see we grouped it we then added in the number of players so it's just counted the rows so in here n in brackets is actually counting the number of rows. If you need to do distinct count for any reason, that's a separate thing. But I just want to do count of rows. And then you've got the average market value. And then you've got it here. Now, because these are such big numbers, you're like, oh, okay, what am I trying to work out? How many millions is that? This is where a thousand separator comes in handy. And as I mentioned earlier, when you do the thousand separator, it converts what is something into character. So let's go into, which one was it again? Uh, market value team. So as we can see here, we can see number under there. When I do a format, which all I'm doing is adding a thousand separator, it will then make it character. Let's run. As you can see, this changed to character, but now we have our thousand separator. So we can see the average market value of a Man City player 22 of them so it's not the whole team but it's technically the squad comes out at 57 million or 58 if you rolled up arsenal second with 44 million per player and remember this is market value so it's not what they bought the players for it's how much the players are worth now so in essence arsenal's team is almost as worth as much as man city although it's showing that it's got three less players so technically if you're adding three extra players here that's another 150 million so it's going to take it a lot more higher but then you've got Chelsea and considering Chelsea have spent over a billion quite recently on players their actually market value is less than a billion where Arsenal and Man City are over a billion Liverpool are just shy of that although they have a few less players so actually if they had the same amount of players as Chelsea there that would actually move it up into there in a way it probably be a fair result to make do an average of how many players are in here times that and then give what is the squad amount because technically if this is the what the cost is you want to kind of level it out but it gives you a good idea and then you got Tottenham and then Man City so if you think about how the league finished it finished with Man City top Arsenal then Liverpool and then Aston Villa who are showing as the seventh and then Spurs and then Chelsea then Newcastle and then Manchester United Manchester United and Chelsea are probably the worst but they've spent so much and some 
some of their players have been injured and not performed well, which would be why the market value would probably overspent and the market value would be quite low. But for Manchester United, they bought a lot of players and they always spent a lot of money. And for their team to be only worth that much, and actually their team worth less than Tottenham who have bought players, but not any sort of big amount on players, just a lot of players to rebuild. Man U seems to, with performance on the pitches as well, is causing their whole market value of their team to go down. There's no way the players that they've got, they paid the same amount for what that is. So they'll probably be a good example to look at. So if we go back and come back to down here, what we want to do is just filter this by Manchester United. And how you do this is again using dplyr and dplyr allows you to add in a filter and then you just put in whatever the table you're using is. So we're still using the league valuations because we don't want to use this one because this one was a table that was grouped. We want the one that has all the players. We want this one here and we just want to see Manchester United. So you filter by the squad. So you do a comma, squad because that's where the team names are and then a double equal sign because in R equals is normally just reference to a column or a particular function where if you want to actually do equals as something you do two equal signs and then in quotation marks we do Manchester United and then I'm just going to call this table by doing the arrow and the hyphen man U or man underscore united underscore market underscore value underscore 2023 so if I run this we now have all of the Manchester United so if we go by alphabetical, you can see the squad. It would have been interesting to actually see what their average age was, to be fair, as well, to see if it's quite an aging squad. Because if you look here, eh, it's not that old, but you've got some players who are there. So go over, have a look at the who's the highest. So it looks like that's Bruno Fernandes. Yeah, Bruno Fernandes is coming out at 70 mil. And I think, Arsenal, I think Manchester United's biggest signing or most recent biggest signing was Anthony. And I can't remember, did they pay 95 million for him? So Anthony is over here. Scroll along. This one, this one, this one, this one. Yeah, his market value is only 28 million. So that's that's a lot less than what they paid for him. And I've only had him two years now. So that is a big drop in market value. Uh, the interesting thing is, is it that he hasn't played much? I haven't actually really followed Manchester United really this season. I know people moaned about Anthony, but I don't know if he hasn't been performing well. He's been injured. Is he actually played? I know he only recently scored when that, in that Liverpool game or something. So I don't think he's been performing is the most likely one. And he's only 24, so there's still time. Um, so let's now start having a look at basically the stats. So if we go back now to see a team's stats for a particular season you can use a url link to be able to get that and you can pull the information to actually find out what all the urls are but unless you're doing a loop to be able to pull through all the information it can take a while but if you're just doing a particular focus it's better to just go on the website and just find the team and pull the information that way by the url so in this case, if you go on to this particular URL, it'll take you to Manchester United. And if you put next to it this, this will give you the season start of that particular team. So you'll be able to look at all the squad, what they had and how they performed in that season. So if you wanted 2022, you just change this to 2022. But if you were to just run this, because it's the current season still, I think it would still give you 2023, 2024, once a new season starts or particular time frame into the transfer due to the off season going into the next season, it might switch. So just remember, if you want to see a particular season, all you need to do is just take the team's URL and in a backslash and then put in the year as the start of the season you want. And then this time, all you're doing is using the function in World Football R called TM underscore squad underscore stats. And then I've put team underscore URL equals. Technically, you don't have to put that in. You can just put that in as it is. But I've put that in just so you know what it looks like. And I can't remember how long this one took. So I'm just going to run the one that I've already run by doing view. And as we can see, we have all the information here. So if I just do by player name again, we can come down to Anthony. And again, you see here, you've got the player URL. So you can use that as a lookup link to be able to pull through this information, which I'll show you how to do later. And then you've got the age, nationality, and then this is the important information. This is telling you what they've done in the season. So they've been in the squad 43 times and they appeared in a game 38 times. 
So basically, because this is more than just the 38 games that happened in the Premiership, this is the whole season. So this will be any additional games. That will be any cup games, European games, that's included in here. So it looks like he was in the squad that many times. I don't know how many of those are on the bench, but he was on that many times and five times he wasn't actually used. And then he's only got three goals, doesn't have assists, unfortunately. And then it tells you how much time he actually played played which looking at other players is not far off what a team would have played the most he's not played as much as bruno fernandez played more than christian erickson played less than harry Maguire. played more than johnny evans yeah you can see quite a lot of players not really consistently with goals bruno fernandez Rasmus, Tom Tomine, is it one eight and marcus rashford only eight interesting so that's a bit of useful data that also you can pull in and to be able to benchmark against what the actual market value is and see the drops. So you kind of go, oh, for that season, you can then bring in another season if you wanted to. But because this is current season, it'd be interesting to see why or how much the market value for Anthony has changed based on his performance this season. To understand the market value over time for Anthony, we need to know where he's played because when you pull the information for the market value, it's based on the country that you've pulled. And if he's played outside of the premiership, which we know he has, then we need to be able to pull that country's data too. So then we can match it up to be able to give us a true reflection of every season. What was his market value based on the information that's available via the scrape from transfer market? So to do this, all I've done is taken the, the URL that you can get from the page. So you remember in here, we have the URLs over here, the player's URL. This is what you need to put in for another function called transfer market or TM underscore player underscore transfer underscore history. This will give you the transfer history of whatever player but in this, in this case, Anthony. And then I'm just doing Anthony underscore transfer underscore history as the name. And if we look at that, we now get all of Anthony's history. So as we can see here, Anthony's moved from starting off as a under 17 at Sao Paulo, moved into the under 20s, then went to the main team, then went to Ajax, and then went to Manchester United. Now the market values here are not technically related to the point of, because if I remember rightly, the market value of when Manchester United bought him was actually 60 mil, so well overpaid. And then this is a difference here and this difference there. And also we can't actually see where the difference is for each period because it's only showing you at the point of transfer. But what this does give us is the countries we need to look at. We need to have England data, Netherlands data and Brazil data. Now it looks like here there isn't any market value for Brazil, but pull through that information anyway to have a look. And to pull another country's player market values, all we do is just do the same as what we did with the English Premiership one. But in this case, instead of where we put under the TM player market values, the country name, I'm putting Netherlands. And then start year, the season 2020. And then down here to see Brazil, because this is the point of when the last time Anthony was there. So if we go to view Netherlands here, if we run this one and let's do player names, we'll find Anthony. Here he is down here. If we scroll along, we'll find that actually his market value is showing as 25. So that's probably when they bought him. So it's probably the season after they bought him. So he's went up a bit because I think it was 18 before. So he's gone up seven. And then if we look at Brazil, let's scroll along. And yeah, there isn't any player market value for him at that point. But I think that's because that's when he moved from the under 20s into the main team. So it's probably why there wasn't a market value for him. So now we know that we can look at different countries. What you don't want to do is sit there and go, OK, I'm going to have to put in England for one and then Netherlands and then Brazil. And then I've got to do it again for another season, another season. Good thing is you can just run for a whole season as many countries as you want. All you have to do is within country name, just add the C and in, in brackets and quotation marks and with commas to split out what countries you need. So instead of having to like do England and 23 and so on and so forth, you can just run one. And then if I do view of this particular run and if I do player name, you'll see Anthony is there and only once. And the reason why he's only once is because there is no data for season 
2023 in Netherlands or Brazil because he's in the English Premiership. So if you wanted to just pull loads of information for that particular season, you can look at all the teams, all different leagues and stuff all around the world. This is the best way. So you can look at what they currently are be able to do that but this doesn't help with a quick and easy way for us to be able to get all the data for Anthony because I would have to run this and it takes a while and then run it again for 2022 and then 2023 or just go through the different countries but the good thing with R is that you can create a for loop and what this does allows you to change what the season start is for each iteration so that particular one which was just run there was for the later season 2023 to 2024 if we wanted to be able to actually change what the season is and each time run and then look at the next season and add that data at the bottom then add that data at the bottom and add that data to the bottom you can do that by first creating a data frame so all you want to do is create an empty data frame because you want to be able to store your data. So as the for loop runs through what it's doing, it will then give you the final output in this blank table. So it's taking the data, sticking it into that table, taking the data, sticking it under the previous table and so on and so forth. And to do that, all you have to do is do data.frame and then two brackets. And then you just point with the arrow and the hyphen to whatever you want to call your table name. Now I make my names really long because I'm explaining what they are. So you can remember what they are and you can visually see what they are. But if you're just doing this as one off and things like that, just make them short DF for data frame, things like that. So that way you can sort of keep on top of them so they don't end up being all really, really long and you can't actually see what they're called. But I do this because it makes it easier to show you exactly what they are and then reference back to them so you know what they mean. So this is going to create a blank table. So if we run this, we now have this blank table here. See? No observations, no variables. That means no rows and no columns. The next thing is to create what is going to be our for loop. Now, how this works is if I come out of this, this shows you what it's starting from. So what I'm doing is saying, please replace I with either the numbers between 2018 to 2023. So if I was to run this, you'll see what I mean. So as you can see down here, we have 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, and 2023. So those are the years which we wanted because those are the ones where it showed the timeframes of how long Anthony has been playing football professionally. And then we want to stick those through the, all the countries he's played in. So therefore we can try and get all the market value. And then down here, we have that same code, which we did before. So remember up here, we've got here, which is all of them. So we've got England, Netherlands, Brazil, and start year 2023. Instead of 2023, we're putting in that I, because that's where it's going to go. Oh, I'm going to look at 2018, and then I'm going to do 2019 do that so on and so forth it does take a while when it does it but it means you don't have to sit there and do everything manually and then once it's done it's done and then here this section down here is going all right once you've done it once stick it into the table once you've done it again stick it under and then stick it under and stick it under and then you have your final actual output and then you want to have a little pause between every time you do it because if you don't there's a good chance that the site might pick up that you're scraping and therefore will maybe block or cut your connection so you won't be able to actually get all that information I have to start all over again so it's a good idea to always just put a slight few seconds gap between it just to give the server time to cope but this isn't a lot so probably isn't too bad but do it anyway so now you know how the different parts work let me explain how it's built so all you have to do for a for loop is type in for and then in bracket you need to do whatever you want to all your loop in this case I'm using I for index and then in and then this is where I've created a sequence now technically you don't have to use a sequence all I've done is create a list so let's say if you had a bunch of information that was held in a file or something you could bring in that file list and then use that as your sequence instead but for ease because all I wanted to do was go from this date frame to this date frame go up by one and then create me that sequence this is what I've done here this is where you go in and then you point to whatever you want the I to replace in this particular case, the year. And then I've just done seek in brackets from whatever date point you want to start from to whatever date point you want to end. And then by how many you want the numbers to go up. In this case, I want it to go up every year. So it's just a one and then it will just create it by one. 
that simple. And then you do a close bracket, close bracket, and then you do your curly bracket. And then this between this point and this point is everything that's happening outside of your for loop. So you've created what the sequence is. Now you're going to run through all the bits you want to do. And what it would do, it would just do all of this and then repeat again and again until it gets to there. So it start with this and then it will get to this and then it will complete. And we have to do whatever the actual point here is. So whatever you want to do that sequence and want it to replace, instead of putting in the year here is what we're doing and to put in the I. And that means every time it runs through, it goes 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022 and 2023. And as I mentioned, it does take a while. So all you have to do is just make sure you just run it like that, run. And I just overwrote it by running this to show you that it's a blank file. So that means I've got to rerun it. Let me stop here and then come back once it's run. So half an hour later and we have the data. So if we go up to player name, it's probably gonna be quite a lot. So I'm gonna to to scroll down a fair bit. So there we go. We've got the lines here, here, here. The only one that's out, not part of it is that one because it was Sao Paulo where we played and I act. So that is not him. And also his right winger, not a left winger. And we can see here Manchester United, Manchester United, Manchester United, Manchester United. We've got the data. So all that effort just to get that. So instead of having to look all the way through, what we can do now is use Anthony's URL again. And we're going to use that to filter that table we just run. So what you need to do again is just in a filter, put in the table that you want, find the column name equals with two equal signs. And then I'm using Anthony's URL because if I used Anthony as we could see there was another player called Anthony so it's best to use a unique identifier that's why I'm using the URL and then I'm just going to call this Anthony market value 2018 to 2023. So if I run that now we can see all the data along here all the seasons and then over here we can see 2018 thing it looks like there's an overlap of 2022 but in 2022 2023 that's when he was at Manchester United so we would need to get rid of this particular line here because that's just extra that isn't actually correct it's all the same information apart from the join from and the club they're playing at and the country. Also, there's no player number. Technically, you get, could get rid of player number, but there's no player number there and you don't want to get rid of that. As we now have all the market value history of Anthony, we now want to be able to grab what his last transfer value was. And to do that, we're just going to filter again on that transfer history table that we did. And then team two, Manchester United, because that's going to give us the point of when he went to Manchester United. So if we run this, this now gives us that one line when he moved to Manchester United, which is their team two. We know that's the last one. Technically, you could build some logic in to see what the last season was or even the most recent transfer date is. But because we knew Manchester United was the one, we just filtered it by there. As you notice in the transfer data, it, doesn't, it has shorter versions of the names of the teams here. So you just got Ajax instead of Ajax Amsterdam and then Man United instead of Manchester United. So what we can see is our market value at that point, which isn't correct, but then we have the transfer value. And now what I want to do is be able to add this information to the table that we created. But the annoying thing is when you do a join, so when you're sticking one table onto the other, it pulls through everything. So the best thing to do is just to reduce the table. So what I've done, again, using dplyr, I'm just using what we've called it, which is Anthony's last transfer, which is what I called that table there. And then I'm just pointing it back to the same name. So I'm using the same table and then I'm just going to reduce the amount of columns. Then I used piping and then this is what you do to select to show what columns are in the table what you do is do select within two brackets you just put in whatever the columns are you want so i want team two player name transfer date and transfer value so if we run that we now just have team two manchester united player name anthony transfer date and the transfer value and to join that i'm going to update the table that we did where it's the anthony's market value 2018 2023 the one that's been filtered just to him and then i'm going to do left join anthony underscore transfer transfer by player name and we're just going to stick that information onto the end of the table and because I'm only using player name it means it's going to put it on every single line instead of just a single line so now if we scroll to the right we now have team two Manchester United the transfer date and the transfer value 
So we can look at the difference across there. So then we can create another column that will look at what's the difference between the transfer value and the market value of each point. And you do that easily with a left join with a table and then buy player name. And now we want to take the stats. So you remember the appearances, the times played, the goals. We want to add that, but we want to use the actual season it relates to. I don't want to show it on all rows. I just want to show it in the most recent season because that's the only data we got. If we had other ones, we could add that as well. So the first thing I want to do is clean up what was the Manchester United stats file. And I want to then just make it into just Anthony's. So it's just getting the Anthony line. And then because there is no actual season start in that data, I need to add that column. And then I'm just selecting which columns we need. So if I pull this up again, the stats, as we can see here, we've got lots of different bits of information, but all I really need is just this information here and then this to be able to link to. But as, as I mentioned, I want to do a lookup, but I want it to be able to pick the current season. And this is 2023. It links with 2023 in the other table. So I have to add a column here that says 2023 for when it shows Anthony. But there's only going to be one line anyway, because it's just going to show Anthony. So I run this. I'll show you exactly what I mean. As you can see here, this is a new column that I've created called season start year 2023. Play URL I've kept and then in squad appearances, goals and minutes played. And how that's done is I've taken the stats table from Manchester United. I filtered it by Anthony's URL again. I've then piped in, which is then creating another thing here, which is this is creating a column. This is mutate and then season start equals 2023. I haven't done any calculation there. All I've done is say just create a column and put in the result 2023. So it's that simple. And then I'm selecting which columns I want. And I've done it in that order is because if I did it in that order and then added, I could do it that way. But in reality, it's better to kind of just pull in and then keep which ones you want to actually keep in case you wanted to change anything later on and add in something else maybe. But then I've done season start and it's all in the order of how I wanted it as well. So we've got all the different columns there. And then that's how you got this result here, because now we want to join with this and this to be able to get on to the final look. So basically it will look like this, that one line there, because it's joined to this and this because it's the same name and it's because I added those two in. And again, all you have to do is take the table that you want to add it to, which is this one here. I've then pointed it back to that table. So it just updates the table and then I'm piping in the left join. So before last time we just did play a name because it's just doing it once. I wanted to do by season start year, which is 2023 and the player URL. And then it links to both. Technically, I could have just done start year because that would have just been enough. But I wanted to show how you can join by two set columns in case you wanted to apply it to all. Because if you had the play, all the player stats, you didn't just have it by Anthony and you wanted to add it to the market value table, which had all Manchester United players in, then you could add that information in that way. It will just know which ones to pick out. And now we have this last table. We want to be able to just clean it up and add in some extra columns as well just to give us our final output of Anthony's market value and how it's changed over time or we can see how it's changed over time and see the differences compared to say this period and this period what the amount is what's the difference between the actual current transfer compared to their market value is it up or is it down we can see it's down here but it's good to have that as a visual note so if I just run this first and then I can explain everything here and you get a nice little rundown on the how to do certain things in R as well. They're always useful to know. So now the final output you get is you've got your start year, the competition name, the region, the country, the player name, the squad, the date joined, where they come from, when the contract is going to expire, which is their most recent. So it's saying here the expiry date is still a good few years away. This is their market value currently because it's the bottom line transfer date, which which is technically kind of the same as date joined, but that looks like that's when it happened and then it went to the next day. For some reason, it's no different from Manchester United, but for the other one, it's always the next day. But it's good to have that date in. Then you got team two, which is relating to your transfer. Technically, I should probably change that to transfer team two or last transfer team two. Then the last transfer value. And then we're adding in some additional columns here, which are between the additional 
columns that we added on before but because we're sorting it in a particular way because we're creating where we want the columns to sit this is why it sits in the middle even though this wasn't in there before and it doesn't just sit on the end so and then what we've got here is the last transfer value versus the market value at the point here so basically it's going this take away this this take away this this take away this this take away this so the lowest market value that anthony had was when he joined ajax by the looks of it and that's 70 million less in an improved 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 but it's dropped off massively at the moment at 28 million is his market value which works out at 67 million less than manchester united pay for him they could probably sell him for maybe more than that but the market value is just based on their performance what the chances are against the market what it would be you know it's, it's all technically a bit in the air sort of number but it's something to work from to give you an idea as a benchmark and then i've added previous market value versus market value in euros so what this one is doing is basically going this with this taken away so we can see his market value went up up and then that's when it's dropped so you can see here it's gone up 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 dropped but you can see by how much so it went all the way up to that down to that and is actually less than and these are na's because there isn't anything here between that and that is a million and between that and that is 25 million and between that and that is minus 32 million so to create the, all that bits of different information in the table all you have to do is you can choose to use your current table if you wanted to but i like to keep that one separate and then i just created a final output table called anthony market value final and then all i've done is use that table that we added all the joins to and everything and then i filtered out that extra line where you had ajax for 2022 and that's done by going start year was this and ajax and the squad equaled ajax amsterdam and then within the bracket I've done it and then put the exclamation mark and what this does you can technically put an exclamation mark between those and those but when you're kind of doing it and it kind of gets a bit messy and you want to actually put stuff within an actual argument there to be able to actually get it to work and this basically reverses what this is so instead of it being this equals and this equals I'm actually saying yeah if those equal don't include and that's why you have this here so all I'm doing is filtering out that one line and then I'm piping back down and then this is where I'm creating three different columns now you only saw two new columns but I needed to create one that gave you the previous market value for me to then do the next calculation I just didn't include it in the final output so I created the column and then I removed it so for the one that is your last transfer so the so for the 95 mil versus the whatever the market value was at the end of that season is I've just given it its name so in mutate all you do is first put whatever you want to all the column and then equal is then what you want the output to be so in this case i've taken the market value first and then taken away the transfer value to give you a final output then as i mentioned for the one where i wanted to look at the last market value of the previous season compared to whatever season we're looking at i needed to get that amount so then i could take away which is what i've done here so i just created one called previous market value and then all I've done is use lag. And what lag is, if you've ever used any other programs, especially like things like SQL, lag and lead is basically to look at before or after. So if you're using lag, I'm only going by one, but you can put a comma and do more if you wanted to. But all you have to do is just do lag and then pick the column you want. And then what that will do is give you the result of what previous. And then that's how I got to be able to make the difference between the previous market value and whatever the market value is for the current season that you're looking at so in essence how i managed to make this this and this so these three ended up moving down to here as a separate one so it can then take off that take off that take off that that's how you got the result and then that's what that final one is so i made this really long title here but that's the one where it's previous market value against current market value and then all i've done is take player market value which is ever current on that particular season and then take away what the previous market value was which is what this column here is and then all i've done is do select and then i've just added in all the columns that i wanted so as you can see i added in these two new ones here but i didn't want to include this one because there's no point because it already exists and it's just extra data so that's why it's not there so i've just kept the ones i want bullet in the order that i wanted and then if you wanted to change what something is called you can go into here so let's say i didn't add this so i'm going to call this 
last transfer team two and that's basically what you're calling it and then you want to point to what was the column originally called so if we go up here you'll see team two it says there but if i was to rerun this all now you now have last transfer team two so that's how you change column name there you go learn some more r and that is basically that. And the great thing is you're not limited to just seeing the market value. As you can see, you can get all transfer spend data as well. And if you want to find out how you do that, I'll show you over here.